All right, game two here with Druid. So what we just played was Forsen's uh, Warrior. This is Firebats Druid from last season that he hit uh, pretty high legend with. I actually laddered with this one quite a bit as opposed to the uh, the Monkey Warrior. But the Monkey Warrior was fun, so maybe we'll play some more of it. All right, so we're playing Druid here. Different and different warrior we're playing against. This is a pretty good matchup. So, I must protect the wild. Lore, lores are like one of our main sources of card advantage, but we just want to keep the uh, wild growth. Hopefully, this isn't Patron because that's a really bad matchup. The reason card advantage is good in decks like Druid and Combo Lock is because you want to have a specific set of cards in your hand at one time, and you get rewarded for that. Um, and the way this deck gets card advantage is cycling wild growths um, at the end. It's not really card advantage that's filtering. Um, the way it actually gets card advantage is Ancient of Lore. But the way this deck draws cards is through uh, doing that. So we're just going to coin wild growth shade here and then save the innervate. Um, and the other way Drew gets card advantage is playing things like um, this that are slightly ahead of um, the curve for terms of cost and like stuff like shade that they'll have to use multiple cards to deal with. Uh, it's like um, either face warrior or just dragon's warrior straight up. Could uh, innervate this here, but we have a nice 3, 4, 5 play, and then maybe we'll draw like a Doctor Moon or a Lore because Lore gives us more cards we can use to innervate. Um, and the reason I actually chose to talk about Druid is because Druid actually loses a lot of card advantage because Innervate doesn't isn't actually a card; it just helps you put things out faster. But the um, I guess we just have to just pop our shade. Yeah, I'm just gonna pop the shade and swipe this because it's better for our curve. He can like weapon this, but that's fine. Definitely just seems like Dragon Warrior. Um, Druid gives up a lot of card advantage by using things like Innervate and Wild Growth, which are worth zero cards, they just accelerate you, but the idea there is if you play your threats faster, your opponent has to use more cards to deal with them, so it evens out the card advantage. And also the idea of this deck, wow, is to make card advantage not matter at all, because even if they have, uh, like, almost want to Innervate this, but it's not, I know it's bad, um, because if you just combo them, it doesn't matter if they have 10 cards in hand, they're losing. Which brings me to another point about card advantage, which is, no matter how many cards you have in your hand, they're useless if you're behind on board, because you can't play them fast enough, you have a limited amount of mana, so you can't play them fast enough to stabilize, so you will just lose. Uh, let's just throw this in here anyway. Um, the next turn we can lore, maybe Innervate something, like, he gets a trade, but it's fine. So yeah, that's one of the uh, the key principles of Druid is you're giving up card advantage to play things faster um, and do more broken things, and then that'll make it worth it. Like, Savage Roar without um, Force is pretty awful a lot of the time, but in conjunction with Force. Uh, I'm not going to do anything here. I guess we'll just Lore again next turn. So Lore um, gives you a 5-5 body and 2 cards, so tremendous source of card advantage. Even though like we don't have a hero power that draws us cards, we're not playing anything else that draws us cards by itself. Like This just cycles, which means it just replaces itself, same with Wild Growth late game. But Lore is just such a powerful card advantage engine that even though Druid uses things like Innervate and Wild Growth, it can get back cards in its hand. So because of the lore, even though our opponent played an Azure Drake, we're actually about even on cards right now. But if we consider this as an Innervate, then I guess we're actually down one less, although we are drawing, which puts it back even if we don't count the Innervate. But he might have some useless cards in his hand too. Ooh, Living Roots. Okay. Could just draw with lore first, then maybe Innervate, Cycle Wrath here. Or just Living Roots. I'll leave this alive. That's probably fine. We're not super low. Hmm. Combo will eventually start being lethal, so let's draw some cards. Actually, both um, do both these things. Ooh, we have um, double combo in two turns. Yeah, so I'm gonna innervate here. I'm gonna wrath this so I can kill it. And I'm actually gonna living roots. And if he brawls this, that's fine. He's using his entire turn to do it. Then we go Azure Drake Shredder. We have a board, and then we're threatening double combo, which is a lot of damage. And again, this like this makes two things for the price of one, but they're both very bad things. They're wisps basically, so it's not actually like worth two cards. Or even one card. But in the beginning of the game it's really important. Same idea with like zombie chow, right? Um, in the beginning it's just can force your opponent to use a lot of resources to deal with it, but as the game progresses. So um, you can think about the value of a card like as a variable um, in your hand. Like these are useless in the beginning because you can't cast them. Um, 
So really, the amount of card advantage you have is always changing as a variable based on how much mana you have and what the board looks like. Um, I know it's kind of hard to think about. You're just thinking about like, oh, I have six cards. I have more than my opponent. But really, it's very variable uh, if you're thinking about it in that terms. And it's all very ingrained with tempo and other things like that. Opponent roping here. He's just clearing. That's good for us. Spell power bash. That's pretty interesting. Is he just going to smork us? That would be worrying if we didn't have lethal. We do have lethal, right? I hope we do. So we have 14 plus 7, 21 plus 6, which is um, 27 plus um, 28. So we don't actually have lethal. If he has Grom plus an activator, we could just die here. Is that is that what I'm hearing? Can't actually double combo. Hmm. Yeah, because it's 7 plus 6, 13 plus 14, 27, 28. So we only have 28 damage. Definitely want to clear this. The problem is that we died a Grom plus like a Whirlwind. Um, Kind of hoping he doesn't have it though. What to do? I could Azure Drake, but I'm not going to draw a Taunt either way. So I, I probably should just trade here like Azure Drake and Hero Power. I guess we'll see what I draw first. But like see all these cards we have so many more cards in our hand than him but they're all completely useless if we die right now to gromash i'm gonna hero power just in case he has some crazy like he's playing like leroy or something or core chrono elites um the extra armor could end up saving us potentially i don't really need the extra creatures if he's not brawling because i can just kill him but again so many cards so many more cards than him with double lore all useless because he can kill us so even though we have more card advantage than him, more creatures on board and in hand by a lot, um, actually doesn't matter what what we do if he has lethal. That's why like aggro decks don't need things that draw cards, like uh, maybe burn decks like shaman do to refill their hand, but they don't at all because they make the fact that you have a lot more cards in hand th in them irrelevant. Because if card advantage was the only key to winning the game, like handlock would beat every aggro deck every time, right? But that's that's not the case. Like hand warlock would just be the best deck if things like tempo and mana limitations didn't apply. Anyway, opponent doesn't seem like he has lethal. Either that or he's um, really skilled at BMing. <laughs> okay, now we should have lethal. Is he gonna go face the madman? No, all right. So it's 20, I really do hope we have, it's 22 plus six plus, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have, we have lethal by, by a significant amount here. So, like here, even if we didn't have any of these cards in our hand, and he had more cards than us, we would still win because of uh, combo. That's why a dru Druid is an interesting class to look at card advantage with. Alright, um, and finally let's move on to a combo lock where I can try to, um, there I can actually talk, discuss, um, I can discuss the value of drawing a card as opposed to using your mana otherwise, because you always have the option to draw cards in Warlock. 